Are we live? All right, all right, all right. Good evening, everyone. Um, I want to welcome you to this uh, Sunday's brunch, or not Sunday's brunch, but Sunday cooking demonstration that I'm about to do. Uh, my name is uh, Keith Brown, and first I want to thank uh, Maisha Thompson for giving me this opportunity to uh, cook before you all. Uh, and the group Love, Peace, and Soul Food. Uh, today, what we're going to be doing is a pan seared salmon with uh, shrimp scampi, a uh, butter with blanc sauce with uh, white wine, a baked broccoli with um, a little olive oil, a little fresh garlic, and Parmesan cheese, and we're going to bake that. And then that's going to be followed with a uh, white rice with a boisson cheese. We call it Boisson Cheesy Rice. Uh, and then if we have enough time, we're going to throw something else in at the end. Now this meal here, I'm going to try to do it in 30 minutes. It's going to be a 30 minute meal. And hopefully I can get it done in 30 minutes and I'm going to show you all how easy it is. A um, uh, little bit about me. I've uh, been cooking since the age of probably about seven. I think I started cooking when I was seven years old. My mother couldn't keep me out the kitchen. I just had it in me. I just wanted to cook. And uh, by the time I turned 14, I was fixing actually uh, full course meals. Uh, I got my first job in a restaurant when I was about 15. And from there as a dishwasher and I trained and learned how to cook. And then from there went on to culinary school, started a catering business. Uh, recent little years, I injured my back, ended up selling my catering business and went back to school and now work as an engineer, but I still love the uh, arts of cooking. Uh, I've cooked for some famous people, uh, Luther Vandross, uh, cooked for Cher, Bob Hope, uh, Bob, Brian Bosworth, Janet Jackson, um, to name a few. Um, and I've cooked at several uh, hotels uh, throughout St. Louis, uh, here in Kentucky, where I presently live at now, and also on a cruise line at one time. I was a cook on there as well. So without any further, we're going to go ahead. We're going to get started. First, I'm going to show you all the ingredients. Oh, I got my sister here with me. She's going to be doing all the filming for me so I can pay attention to uh, what I'm doing with you all here. Uh, first, we got here, we got all the ingredients over there so y'all can see that. And uh, I'll reach in here and grab what we're going to need out of here. And we're going to come over to here. All right, so the first thing I want to get started is the broccoli because the broccoli is going to take the longest to cook. Okay, and with all produce, you want to take it and rinse it off. Although this has been pre-washed, I still always like to rinse it off. Okay, so we're going to rinse that off. And we're going to get that cut up. Okay. You see any little spots in there or whatever, just cut those out. Okay. All right. Now, next thing we want to do is take the broccoli, put it in a bowl, like so. And then we're going to come over here. I'll put a little sea salt on it. A little sea salt. Right here I have uh, three cheese, grated Parmesan, Romano, and uh, Asiago cheese. So we're going to sprinkle a little of that on there. And then we're going to hit it with a little olive oil, about a tablespoon of olive oil. I don't usually measure anything, but it's about a tablespoon. Then what we want to do, kind of give that a toss. And we're going to have your oven preset at about 410 degrees. Okay. Now you can cook this in the oven on a sheet pan. But I prefer to use a little aluminum pan like this because it's thin. And I want the broccoli to get really hot so that it'll brown. Give me like a little crispy coating on the broccoli. So I prefer to use a little pan like this. So it's what? 534, 35? So we're gonna go ahead and throw this in and see if we can get this meal done in 30 minutes. We're gonna let that cook. Now while that's cooking, I'm gonna get my skillet heated up. Go ahead and get that heated. 
And I put that on about medium heat for right now. Did you say what your oven was heated to? Yeah, 14. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to put a little olive oil in the skillet. And you can either use olive oil for this dish, or if you have clarified butter, you can also use clarified butter. It works just as good. I prefer clarified butter, but we're going to use olive oil today. Okay. And then I'm going to add a little butter to that. I said about a tablespoon. <laughs> That's a big tablespoon. <laughs> All right. We're going to let that get hot. And while that's heating up, we're going to step over here where I have the uh, salmon and my shrimp. Now, you can get this at any local market. Right here, this is the uh, Atlantic salmon. And uh, I always like to take it and, and rinse it off with a little cold water. Okay, like so. And then what we're gonna do, I'm not gonna remove the skin. I'm gonna leave the skin on and I'll show you why, because the way I'm gonna cut it, the skin's gonna come off anyway. So. It's important when messing with fish, always wanna wash your hands constantly, keep your hands clean. It's important. All right, so we're gonna step over here. Check our skillet. It's getting nice and hot. All right. Now on my cutting board, I have wax paper. And I like to put wax paper on here because that way, if I need to cut something else on it, I can. Uh, whenever you use a cutting board, make sure you always clean it with a little bleach. It always helps to sanitize the board. Now we're gonna cut this on an angle. So I'm gonna cut this starting off on a slight angle, like so. Okay. About, maybe about an inch thick, if that. And this way I don't have to take the skin off because I'm gonna cut it off this way. Now I have about, I bought about a pound of salmon. And really, for two people, this will actually feed three people. One pound. Okay. All right. Put that to the side for something else. All right. Now. I'm gonna take some flour, and I like to use this uh, Kentucky Colonel seasoned flour. And the reason why is because it's already seasoned. I don't have to add anything to it. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a little flour on this tray here. And then I'm going to lightly dredge it, the salmon and the flour, just lightly. Now it's important to make sure your, your grease is nice and hot so that it'll get the Fish nice and coated, nice brown texture. Turn it up a little bit there. You got Robin Latimer Martin on here saying hello. All right. Michelle Johnson gave you a hard face with a smile. Hello. All right, so we're gonna get the sign in here going. All right. All right, we're gonna let that cook. All right, now while that's cooking, I'm going to uh, get my water going from rice. Now I like to use mini rice. I say mini rice don't take long to cook at all. So we get that going. Turn it on high. Put a little salt in your water. Just for flavor, you don't have to, but I like to put a little salt in it. And we'll turn it up on high. Put a lid 
on it to bring it to a boil. Now, now while the salmon, the salmon's over here cooking, we're gonna go back over here. And we're gonna get our shrimp ready. And I bought a pound, a little bit over a pound of pill and devein white shrimp, 2630s. For those that don't know, that just basically means that there are 26 to 30 shrimps in a pound. Okay, always rinse your seafood off. I've already really rinsed this off already, but we're gonna rinse it off again just to show you that you need to do this. Okay. All right. Then again, also, whenever you're dealing with seafood in your sink at home, once you're done cooking, you wanna take a little bleach and wash your sink down real good so that you don't get any type of cross contamination. It's very important. So once I get done later on, I come through here usually with a little all-purpose cleaner, something like that, to wipe my sink and stuff down whenever I deal with seafood and chicken. That's another one. So we're gonna take this over here. Alright. Now, the salmon, you can just about tell when it's ready to turn. It starts looking a little white on the uh, top there. Now all we want to do is just give it a little flip. Like so. See how that's nice and brown and cold? That's how you want it. There we go. There we go. Alright. Now this, uh, this won't take long to cook. I say probably about three minutes, three to four minutes on each side. And then it's going to be uh, done. We're going to set it to the side once it's done. All right. Another a little dish to set your fish on so when it comes out, skill it here, you have something to set in on temporarily. Yeah, I'm gonna switch this over here. Start to have a bigger burner. Here we go. May okay. I have the name of the flyer that you used? It was a Kentucky Colonel seasoned flour. Okay, and we got a couple pieces left. We want to get them a little, little browner. Okay. All right. And we take this out. All right. Now. The next step is not to drop your spatula in the skillet. <laughs> but that's your next step. Okay. All right, so now that that's, the fish is done, I want to turn my skillet down some. And I want to get a little garlic. And this here is just a uh, little fresh garlic I already missed. And we're going to add some garlic to this. I say about a good tablespoon. Everything's a tablespoon. Yeah, everything's a tablespoon <laughs> with me. <laughs> All right. Saute it up. And don't let your garlic burn. So that's why I turned the skillet down. Be sure not to let your garlic burn. Now we're gonna. Now we want to add our shrimp. And I'm gonna lightly dredge those in a little flour. Lightly, not a lot of flour is needed. I need, but 
I'm gonna go and cook them all up. Okay. Let me wash my hands real quick. Now, our water has come to a boil. So now we want to add our rice, rice. And it's about, probably about a cup. I don't know. <laughs> That's about to say a tablespoon. <laughs> now we got about a cup. Now with mini rice, once it comes to a boil, all you have to do basically is turn your fire off. Once it comes back up to a boil, let it sit, and then it's done. All right. We'll move it back. All right. So with the skillet, now you don't have to use a big skillet like I'm using, but you want to let your shrimp get nice and, and brown on each side. The flour is just going to give it a little texture, a little crunchiness is what we want. Now shrimp, don't take long to really cook. Uh, we're going to saute these and get them brown on both sides, and we're going to take the rice off now and let that just sit. It came to a boil, let it sit for about 10 15 minutes, and it's good to go. Time to burn it off. Christy Taylor, sorry if I missed it, but what kind of oil is he using? Olive oil. Just regular olive oil. Yeah, olive oil. And a tablespoon of butter mixed with it. Alright, now we're gonna turn this back up. Turn your fire back up. I was telling you all, I once uh, tried out for uh, MasterChef back in 2010. I tried out for MasterChef. And uh, for those of you out there that uh, ever think about trying out for one of those shows, just a few uh, tips. You know, I can cook. But those shows, what they basically look for, they look for somebody that's got a life-changing event or something major that happened to them. Uh, so if you don't have a major story to tell that will catch the audience eye, you're not going to make any of those shows. I didn't have one then, but I have one now. So I'm actually planning on uh, auditioning again next year for the uh, Master Chef again. I made it to the second round the last time, but because I think because I didn't have a really fantastic story to tell, that's as far as I got. Okay, so as you, as you can see, the shrimp are starting to uh, whiten. And that's how you can tell when they're done. They start off looking white, pink, but as you cook them, the skin gets a lot whiter. So now that the shrimp's about done, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a little white cooking wine, and I'm gonna turn my fire up just a little bit, about medium hot, and I'm gonna hit it with the wine. That's probably about, I say about a half, about a fourth of a cup of uh, white wine. And then you want to turn your fire up so that that can start to reduce. And what I mean by reduce, you want it to just evaporate down some. As you can see, it's a lot of wine right now, but it's going to cook down. And once it cooks down, after it cooks down, we're going to hit it with a little heavy cream. It's a 40% whipping cream. Okay. So we're going to let that cook. The rice is cooked. The broccoli is looking good. You want to shake it up and let it go. Move this off the way. Okay. Now, while the shrimp is reducing, I got right here some fresh parsley. Uh, the parsley has already been washed. Highly recommend. I always wash it before you're using it. And what we're gonna do with the parsley is we're gonna chop it up. So I'm gonna grab another knife. Bring it over here. Can you buy white cooking wine at the grocery store? Can you buy what? White yes. Wine. Yes, you'll find it in the season now. I bought that, actually I got that at Walmart. Okay, so we've got the parsley chopped up. Okay. 
We're gonna add a little parsley. And as you can see, it has reduced and reduced. See how it's starting to thicken up? Once it starts to thicken like this, and what's also making the wine thicken is the flour that I put on the shrimp. So that's helping as a thickening agent to get the shrimp to a sauce to thicken up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit it with a little 40% cream. And I say it's probably about, okay, probably about a half cup. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put that's about a half a cup, about a cup. I'm sorry, that's about a cup. I said half a cup, but that's about a cup. All right, give it a little shake. Now it's important the type of skillet that you use when preparing any type of saute dish. You wanna make sure you use it a non-stick saute pan. Um, can't use cast iron and things like that because it will stick. But you wanna use a non-stick uh, skillet, sort of like this, so that you can move it freely on the stove and kinda of just give it a little jiggle. Because when you cook it with cream, cream when it heats up, it rises. If you walk away from this, you can come back five minutes later and the cream will be all over your counter and scorch. That's another important thing. You don't want to let it burn or scorch. If by chance you're cooking a dish with heavy cream and it burns or get a little scorch flavor to it, you can add a little sugar and the sugar will kind of take away the little burnt flavor out of it so that all is not lost. Okay, so we're gonna let that simmer and reduce. How much time we got before 30 minutes? We still under 30 minutes? Okay, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna have this done. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this dish for the fellas that's watching. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, for the fellas. This was my go to dish on my dates. And if I went out on a date, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you right now, I will cook this meal, and I've never had a female complain one time about this meal. Birthdays, Valentine's Day, things like that. You, uh, you, you know, it'll be a nice meal. Rather going out for dinner for Valentine's Day, come in and prepare a meal, something like this. I guarantee you she will like it. I promise you. All right, so we letting this reduce some here now. And as you can see, it's starting to thicken up. The longer it's cooking, you want to keep moving that sauce. You want to keep moving it so that it doesn't scorch or burn on you. But I'm going to let it sit once you see how it bubbles. And as it's bubbling, it's thickening up as well. So the sauce is going to get nice and thick. And then also what I like to do is I like to add a little, just a little bit of cheese to it. Not a lot. Just a little. There we go. Just a little. One of your viewers say you measure like his grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm bad at that. But when I when I uh, cook, I cook by taste. So I don't measure. All right. So now, as you can see, that's starting to thicken up just like I want it, nice and thick. And I'll let that sit there and continue to uh, reduce. Now, while that's reducing, let's look at our rice. You can see it's a little water still in there, so it's not absorbed all the water yet. So we're gonna let that sit back over on the burner. Now that the burner has cooled down some, I'll set it back on there. That way it'll absorb all the rest of the water evaporated. Cause this still got a few seconds to go, but it's almost there. The parsley gives it a nice little color, the green in there with the white sauce. It gives it a nice little flavor. And then, the, and then of course the garlic and then the white wine. When you reduce the white wine, that flavor just enhances the sauce. Okay, so that's about where I want it. Okay. And then also, this dish here, you can actually turn this into a pasta shrimp scampi. You can add pasta to it if you want. Uh, you can add chicken and vegetables, uh, broccoli, carrots, cauliflower, anything like that that you want to add to this, you can. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this on low. Okay. And then now what I want to do is turn this uh, back up on this fire here. And I want to check my rice. What's going on here? I know it's ready. Okay. Is it best not to rinse your rice? Yes. I don't rinse my rice. So, because when you rinse the rice, you take the starch off. And I like my rice kind of sticky. So I don't rinse my rice. It all, it all depends on what I'm doing with the rice. 
if I'm making, uh, say for instance, if I'm making a dish that I don't want it to stick, I'll rinse it. But if I'm making something where I'm going to make a mold, I want a little of that starch left in my rice, so I will not wash the rice off. You just got to make sure that you let the water absorb into the rice and don't have it running like this is. It's ready now. So what we're going to do with the rice is <clears throat> this right here is called boysen garlic and fine herb cheese. Oh, my God. This stuff here is so good. If you never tried it, shame on you. <laughs> you need to get to the store and get some real fast. See that? It's really good. I use it for a lot of stuff. You can use this in, um, you can use this in uh, stuffed meatballs, uh, stuffed chicken balls. Um, you can use it on burgers, stuffed burgers. I mean, it's really good on crackers. It's macaroni and cheese. It's good in everything. So we'll take about about a tablespoon, <laughs> 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 and we're gonna add that to that. And then we're going to take a little butter, uh, my tablespoon. tablespoon, yeah, tablespoon. <laughs> we're going to add that, and then uh, get my spoon here. I want to add a little, a little black pepper and just a pinch of salt. All right, there we go. And we're going to work that cheese in. Okay, can you see it? Oh yeah, it's real cheesy. Look at that. Mmm, look at that. Don't that look good? We're gonna add a little parsley for color. I like color. Everything's gotta look nice and pretty. I remember I worked for a chef one time. He was a French chef. Y'all think Ramsey something. I met Ramsey before Ramsey met Ramsey. I worked with a French chef one time at a hotel in St. Louis. And this guy was worse than him. He would throw things, pots, skillets, keys. I mean, he taught me a lot. He made me respect the uh, art of fine, fine art of culinary. So, okay. So now we got everything ready for the plate up. The only thing we got to do now is check on our broccoli. You uh, see, you can see the little brown edges. Oh man, this is really good. You can do this with asparagus. You can do this with uh, cauliflower, asparagus, zucchini. And basically, all as I did, I just sauteed it. I'm sorry, I mixed it in a bowl with olive oil, Parmesan cheese, and a little sea salt. Okay, and as you can see, it's ready. Broccoli's ready to go. So we're gonna take it out. Now, next thing we wanna do is call the plate up. Let me get some of this stuff out the way over here. Let me go ahead and Okay. All right, get a little stuff out of the way here. All right, so now, the presentation. So what I like to do is I, I like to grab a, uh, let me see, let me grab a, uh, let me just one of these up here. Uh, I'm just gonna grab a coffee cup. Show y'all a little trick here. Some of those uh, beginning cooks. And then take your rice, Put it in the bowl. Are we under 30 minutes? Two to go. Two minutes ago. And then what you want to do is kind of pack the rice in. And then you want to come over to your plate. Okay. There you go. And then we're going to take the... Uh, Yeah, Simon. And we're gonna take this. Just like so. Piece like that. Piece like that. Okay. And then we're gonna grab a And grab some of the shrimp. And I like to put 
two shrimp on each side. Like that. Like so. Like so. Now, in your presentation, you know, you, excuse me, you always want to make sure you keep your plate clean. Okay. And then we're going to take the broccoli, do it like this. Like so. And then we're going to take some of the sauce. One minute, chef. Damn, they have a 30 minute meal. 30 minutes. And then the only other thing that I would do to this, I have a lemon here, a little lemon on there. And then take your lemon for presentation. Lavinia Gravely said, Great job. Thank you. Thank you. What are you doing? Let's see. That's where you get fancy, huh? Right there. And then. There you go. All right. There you have it. There you have it. So, uh, like I said, easy meal. I prepared this in less than 30 minutes. Um, the salmon is going to be very tender. The shrimps are tender. The sauce is going to complement the cheesy rice. And uh, there you have it. So now, I know the guys are thinking, hey, I done fed her. She's good and full. What can I do to top this off? What can I do to top this off? Well, you can make a dessert. And I'm gonna show you how to make a dessert that she will love. And you can make it in less than 10 minutes. All right? Let me slide this off the way. Move this over here. And I'm gonna grab a dessert plate. Right here, y'all gonna go. Wow, look at this! Intimates mini minis pound cake. Y'all like, you gonna make a dessert with that? Yep, I'm gonna show you just how we gonna do it. You can buy this, or you can either buy the whole pound cake and just slice it. So what we're gonna do? Take the pound cake. I'm gonna cut it in half like so. And then I'm gonna take this one. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut it in half. Grab a little ice cream, vanilla ice cream. Okay. Get a little scoop. Like so. Uh -oh. Like so. And we're gonna take this, do it like so. And then right here where I have a sliced strawberries with sugar. You can buy this at any grocery store in town. We're gonna take that. And we're gonna take this. Mmm, don't that look good? Quick and easy. Quick and easy. Who has to go out to eat? Stay at home and cook like I do. And wash dishes like I do. <laughs> <laughs> this is my sister. She stay around the corner from me. So she comes over quite often to see what I done cook. And so we have a thing that if I cook, she washes the dishes. <laughs> and then to top that off, 
Strawberry shortcake in less than five minutes. All right. That, uh, that concludes my demonstration for the day. Uh, I hope that uh, you have enjoyed it. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys uh, post your pictures of the dish. You all made it. And uh, again, I want to thank uh, Maisha for inviting me uh, to do this. And I uh, hope that uh, you all have enjoyed it. Thank you. Any questions? No. I answered them as you went along. Must be strawberry what? Strawberry shortcake. That's what it is. Strawberry shortcake. This is what it's called. And it's just a, uh, like I say, intimate pound cake, sliced with ice cream, uh, frozen strawberries, sliced with sugar, topped with Cool Whipping. And then for the main entree, we had the. Count me. <laughs> <laughs> we had the uh, pan seared salmon with uh, Bozon cheesy rice, shrimp scampi with a white butter with blanc sauce, and baked broccoli with olive oil, sea salt, and Parmesan cheese. Okay? All right, any questions? I think I've got all of them, but if you have any questions, please just leave comments and I'll try to answer all those that I can. All right? Appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to show you all uh, this dish, and I uh, hope that uh, you have enjoyed it. Thank bon appétit. You. Bon appétit.